Good afternoon and welcome to the Berlin Summit. Thanks for joining us today. It's really exciting seeing a full house in the room. A lot of customers reach out to us uh, because they want to build and deploy applications on AWS today very quickly and making sure that it's done in a safe manner. This requires a lot of undifferentiated work and high complexity. Right from understanding your code base, setting up development environments, and making sure that your workflows are automated and running in an appropriate fashion, there's a lot of work that one needs to do in the software development lifecycle. We hear you. We hear you and we understand that you need to understand what is the right design and architecture that you require to set up your applications. What are the appropriate uh, services that AWS provides that you can leverage for your applications? And because of your feedback, uh, in 2022, we launched a service called Amazon Code Catalyst that solves a lot of these problems. And today I'm on stage to share with you more new and exciting features that comes with Amazon Code Catalyst to help you in your software development lifecycle, leveraging, yes, generative AI. Hello, everyone. I am Amna Najmi, a senior data scientist here at AWS Professional Services in Germany. And joining me here today is Daniela. Daniela, if you could introduce yourself. Thank you very much, Amna. I'm Daniela Dornano, part of Professional Services, managing a team of data scientists using data and AI ML on a daily basis to help you as a customer to take your idea from conception to production on a daily basis. One of the main perks at working at AWS is that we get to work every day on problems that matter for you as a customer. So we are aware that throughout time, our tenet was always that we work on your choice to go from having the right tool for the right job. With time, that took to increasing the sophistication of our tools and of our services. And also, this choice at times can be well overwhelming and adds complexity. Today, we want to talk about a topic to simplify these for you, so to help you in a more accelerated fashion to deploy best practices and the security and have the certainty that what we're doing is aligned with the rest of the industry while needing to invest less time while doing this and being able to learn for all the um, other projects and best practices that have been developed uh, by the tech community. So with this, I am so excited to talk to you today about Amazon Code Catalyst, which is a key service that uh, will help you today. We launched this service in April last year, and this is supposed to be a seamless experience for all the different personas working in a software product, from testers to uh, the developers being front-end or back-end, to the engagement manager, to the product manager. Everyone has a place within this service to be able to code, see what is the test coverage of your software application, uh, who has ownership to what task. There's a clear transparency in this one seamless place. So you can do all the, the coding, building, deployment all in one place and have the same experience without being distracted to go and look it up on other platforms. So with this, I would like to highlight a few key features that are allowing you to do this part. So uh, the first key features that I would like to highlight is the enterprise steering uh, and pricing. So this tool starts like uh, $20 per developer. And what I think it's very important for you to know, as you add new developers to the Code Catalyst service within your organization, the resources and the infrastructure being available behind the service will scale out. So you will have more compute power, more availability for network traffic, so the experience stays seamless as the number of developers using this service within your organization will grow. The second key feature that was a direct ask uh, from you, security is job zero at AWS. I think we say this in every single talk, and that's really the tenet that we 
are pursuing every single day. So uh, it was very important for you to, to have integration with single sign-on, so you can uh, log in into this application using your identity center for your organization. And this feature was, re was released as part of the reInvent release announcements, as well as the integration with VPC. So all the development and de uh, deployments and everything, all the work you're doing stays within the network of your organization. Furthermore, automated workflows is a very important key feature of Code Catalyst. It's very important that you are able to do automatic deployments from the same seamless environment. And additionally, I want to highlight another feature that came directly from an ask for you. Um, within every organization, there's different policies, different culture, different experience with the tech stack. And particularly, for example, Terraform is a type, type of deployment stack that you know, so, uh, some of you are embracing fully. So last year, we launched the, the possibility to use Terraform to launch and automatically deploy your applications from Cat Catalyst, and we have integrated with it. Furthermore, uh, before moving on to the generative AI part, I would like to highlight one last very important feature. We started this presentation I'm now mentioning that we want to simplify the way we accelerate building new applications in this new innovative area. A key feature that will help you achieve this is the blueprints. So custom blueprints are much more than just templates. They have everything in it from the best practices to architecture uh, supports, to readme files, to policies, uh, to, deployment best to deployment stacks. Everything is one place, and you can leverage the blueprints. When you saw this feature, I think as a customer, of course, you get very excited. And you ask us to be able to create your own blueprints and add them and maintain them within Amazon Code Catalyst. So this was also released last year in December. So you can also, as a user of Code Catalyst, go and maintain and add your own blueprints within this service. Having gone through that, I would like to highlight now the integration with Amazon Q in Code Catalyst. So um, if you have not heard, Amazon Q is a virtual assistant based on the new technology of generative AI that is able to help you to accelerate many types of tasks that you do on a, your everyday basis as in your company. When it comes to the integration with Code Catalyst, Amazon Q will assist you on your day-to-day -day task from uh, being able to find a particular bug if you know the exact error, um, log error, recommending you a possible fix, to really supporting you on some of the most annoying types of tasks that you have to do on your daily basis, like writing descriptions of your pull requests, closing your pull requests, um, having all this done for you. We look at it as a way to improve your quality of life as a developer or as a part of a software team, regardless like being a tester or different persona within a product team. So um, this particular integration uh, is very exciting for us. We really hope that at the end of the talk, you are curious to go and try it out. So without further ado, I would like to pass it on to Amna to dive deeper on some of the key features of, this in, of the Q integration. Thank you, Daniela. So how many developers do we have in the room? Can you raise your hands? A lot of you. How many of you are worried about all the issues that you need to close this sprint? Uh, how many of you would really like an assistant to assist you in that process, especially you know, the tedious task of your pipeline failing because of this one small change you introduced in your code, and now you know, the test coverage is not meeting uh, the required minimal criteria, or you broke something else in your DevOps pipeline? Uh, this is where you can leverage this assistant that Daniela just introduced. So. Amazon Q, so that you as a developer can really focus on the main meat of your project, which is really creating code. Uh, so as developers, we spend majority of our time authoring code, but that's not where we start, right? When we, we are new in a project, we really need to understand the code base. We really need to go through the different dependencies and the different modules that we have not developed firsthand. 
once we have that in place, we need to kind of also understand an approach or a mental model of what we really need to write, right, and why it would work. And after going through all these meetings and discussions, we come to an approach and then we start writing our code. Once our code is uh, developed, we are confident enough to create a pull request. Uh, we have reviewers that review it, add comments, and then Finally, one fine day, you can merge your changes into the main branch. It's a long process. Uh, and uh, Amazon Q can do a lot of this for you now uh, as part of Amazon Code Catalyst. So what would happen is, uh, just as a normal developer, you would assign an issue on Amazon Code Catalyst to Amazon Q instead of a developer. So what Amazon Q would then do is it would look at uh, the code repository, summarize it uh, for you, so it will create a background and tell you what each script is trying to do. It would then, based on your issue description, propose an approach. Uh, and this is where the interactive feature of, of this uh, service comes into play. Because once it approach, uh, proposes an approach, it would ask you if it should proceed. And based on, on the approach, you can also give feedback. So absolutely, like in an issue, uh, you provide a comment, and, and you're like, hey, I don't think this is the direction I would like to go. And you can nudge it into a different direction. Uh, based on that, once you're fine with the approach it is proposing, it will go to the next step of authoring the code for you as well. So yes, it will generate the code for you. And then once it's done generating the code, it will also open a pull request, attach the link of the pull request ticket on your issue, and assign you as the reviewer, because you are the owner of the issue. Once that's ready for you, you have to go on the pull request, look at the changes that it's proposing, and again, the interactive mode comes into play here, because you can again comment and ask it to make some more changes. Maybe there are some changes that you don't like, and you want to make changes. Or you just want to add on. So it could also be a good starting point for you. Then you go on that feature branch, add your own changes on top, or change something here and there, and then um, you know, add more on the feature branch, ask someone else to review it, and then merge it into the main branch. So this is basically overall what Amazon Q can assist you in. And um, I will also show you. Uh, this in action in the next slide. Uh, so I think that would also make things a little more clearer. So we'll quickly jump into the demo. And before I start the demo, uh, this is basically how the code catalyst space looks like. Uh, when you get started, as Daniela mentioned, there are projects. And, and you can either start your project from scratch, so you bring your own code. Uh, you can also uh, start a new blueprint that can be shared uh, between different teams in your organization. Or if you want to really accelerate your journey, you can leverage an exi existing blueprint. So in this demo, what I'm going to really do is I will start by creating a project. And as I said, you can bring your own code, start from scratch, or start with a blueprint. And there are a lot of blueprints that are available here. And what I am going to leverage today is the Bedrock Gen AI chatbot. So yes, a lot of customers are starting their generative AI journey with retrieval augmented generation generated uh, chatbot uh, applications. And there is a blueprint available. On the right side, you can see a readme that tells you about all uh, the different features of this application. Also tells you about the different supported languages for your chatbot. So there's English, Deutsch, even Japanese. Tells you about the details of the deployment. Shows you the architecture. So you have the front end, back end, which leverages Amazon Bedrock, which has large language models, like different models from Cloud. Uh, and also, how many of you always get stuck with I am permissions and roles because you know there's something missing or it's too open? So it also sets that up for you. So you know the minimal permissions and policies that are required to deploy and you know set up the interactions between the different services. So I set it up for me, uh, and then I add in all the details like the sandbox AWS account uh, that is needed. Can you go back. Can you go back to the previous slide, please? Oh, again. Yeah, but it's going to the next slide. Oh, 
could you play it again from there? Because this is not working. This just takes me to the next slide. Here? No. Awesome. Apologies for the <laughs> disruption, but as I was mentioning, um, you are leveraging the chatbot blueprint here. So yeah, a lot of us are really, really worried about, okay, all the roles and permissions that we have to set up, right? Um, it's not just writing the code and setting up the application, it's the infrastructure, the DevOps, the pipelines, the automations. So this blueprint is really helping you with that. So uh, for any of you who are really wanting to start your generative AI journey in your organizations uh, through proof of concepts or MVPs, but really don't know where to start, I think uh, blueprints like these can really help you to make sure you follow the best practices when it comes to your infrastructure as code, uh, security being in place, your DevOps in place uh, to set everything up for you. So uh, that's exactly what I'm doing here. So these are the roles and permissions uh, it sets up. Uh, I create a demo project on Code Catalyst. Uh, I select all the things that I need. There are also some uh, custom parameters that you can add. For example, you know, if you want to deploy this in a specific region, here I'm doing it in the Oregon region. Um, you know, if you want a very specific custom name for your stack, your S3 buckets, and so on. And based on all of the information that I provide, I, I create uh, the chatbot project. So what's it's, what it's doing here behind the scenes is in a couple of minutes, it's setting up the project for me on Code Catalyst. Basically, my code is set up. My DevOps pipelines are set up based on the workflows and the scripts that exist. And it's also leveraging Terraform or CDK based on what blueprint or what code you have in your code base, deploying all the infrastructure in the sandbox accounts and regions that I selected. So all that in some clicks is happening for you. So as you can see, this is the source repository of the Blueprint. There is some back-end logic. Uh, there is front-end code also available. Uh, here you can see the different CDK constructs and the back-end and front-end stack uh, scripts that exist. And then you also have the main stack, which is leveraging all of these different uh, stacks. Under Code Catalyst, you can also see the different workflow scripts that exist. So this is a workflow which is really executing all the build and deployment stages for you as part of this project. So it's basically, so we'll, uh, as I set up this project, it triggered a run of your uh, pipeline uh, using or leveraging the workflow template that you have in your code base. So it's basically kind of validating if uh, I have access to my bedrock models that are leveraging here. It's setting up the AWS sandbox accounts in the regions I selected. Uh, it's also building the front end, uh, building the back end for me, and then leveraging CDK to deploy all the infrastructure I need for my front end back end. This is actually how the application really looks like. This is the chatbot that we've set up that leverages Claude. So we have Claude 3 here. So we have uh, Haiku, Sonnet, Opus, which are multimodal models. So what I'm doing here is basically uploading a screenshot of the Code Catalyst startup page. And I'm asking the chatbot to summarize it for me. So it looks at the image, and it summarizes uh, whatever is in the image for me. And this is a very, like, Simple problem, but you can also include your own documents and, and, and index them and ask questions specific to your you know, company's knowledge base and data. Uh, there are also other features here. So as I mentioned, it's not just supporting English language. It supports many other languages like German, which could be very relevant, but also J Japanese and so on. You can control uh, the conversations as a user, delete your conversations, and also set up custom bots for your different teams. So if you are in HR or finance and you want a specific bot for your team, you can set that up here as well. So this is how the application looks like. Now let's go back to creating an issue. If you are new to this project and you want to you know, contribute as a developer, you can create an issue here which could be summarizing the code base. But let's make, give it a twist, not in English, in Japanese. So I'm basically asking it to create a readme in Japanese language. But what I'm really doing is assigning this issue to Amazon Q instead of a developer. And um, once I do all of that and create that issue, 
Automatically, when it's assigned to Amazon Q, it moves, moves to in progress, and then Amazon Q basically follows certain approaches to solve that problem for me. So if you can see here, the different uh, steps are basically evaluating the prerequisites, reading the entire code base, uh, generating a background. This is also really helpful. Like as a developer, it will tell you what each script really means in the relevant uh, directories of your repository. So it tells you, uh, you know, what README means, what the workflow script means, and so on, and then proposing a, proposes an approach. This is a very simple problem for uh, Amazon Q. It's just generating a README. So it proposes an approach, also you know, tells you that there is additional Japanese language support in the application. It documents the, the, the code base in Japanese language. There are also some, very interestingly, some GIFs in Japanese in the code base. It discovers that and also adds those GIFs and screenshots in your README. Uh, you don't really explicitly ask it to do it, but it does it for you. And then asks you if you want to proceed with this approach. You say yes, and only then it goes to the next step, which is generating the code or generating the readme for you. So this is where you can nudge it in either direction and be like, hey, I'm not fine with this. Can you change this a bit? Or can you, uh, you know, uh, write it in this way and so on? Once it's done with all this, it opens a PR and links it in your issue. So when I go there, on the pull request on the left, this is basically uh, the pull request created by Amazon Q, assigned to me as a reviewer, and it shows all the changes that it is making. I go through the pull request, and when I'm happy with it, I can confirm and approve the pull request, and then click on Merge and merge these changes into the main branch. What this will then do is trigger uh, the workflow that is set up as part of this blueprint, which is again rebuild, redeploy everything that is part of this main branch. Uh, so exactly what it's doing here, I'm going to the workflow. You can see it's again running because there was a merge into the main branch. The workflow is rerunning, and it will incorporate all the changes that you've added uh, to um, your uh, code. So. I think we are familiar with these steps. Um, it was validating the model access and so on. Now, um, let's look uh, at another example. So before we go to the other example, you can see now there is a README in Japanese that it created. It's very, very similar to the README that was in English. Uh, but as I said, it also includes the GIFs and the images that were in our doc docs folder, which were in Japanese. So it was smart enough to do that as well for you. So you know, these are the extra tedious tasks that you'd spend hours on as a developer. And you can easily assign this to an assistant. And even though it's not perfect, it can, it can really accelerate your journey there. Let's create another issue. So in this case, what we're doing is we are going to create a new workflow altogether. You know, like as a software developer, sometimes we don't have time to spend on the whole DevOps part of our project, or we don't have enough DevOps to take care of all that. So what I'm doing here is I'm asking it to create a pull request workflow for me and giving all the details of what I want. So what I'm trying here is I'm asking it to create a workflow with a step to scan the code and discover security vulnerabilities. So I'm using Amazon Code Guru for this. So basically, I again assign it to Amazon Q. It moves to in progress, same, same way. Uh, when I go to this uh, ticket, uh, I can see that it will follow the same steps. It will read through the code base. It will. Uh, a pro, you know, propose an approach for me. I can review that approach and then decide to go forward or not. So let's quickly look at it. So first, it gives me a background. So the first file that it looks at is the workflow file, and it tells me, you know, uh, these files define the CI/CD setup of the project and so on, and then also uh, tells me about the backend directory and so on and so forth. So, also very good for someone starting new on the project. Based on this, you can really understand what the different scripts or code is doing as part of your code base. Once it's done that, it generates an approach, right? And it it, it does make a very a lot of sense, right? So it, it tells you that, OK, I need to add this step. This is the code snippet that I might add as part of the code generation. It's, it's in a YAML format, as you can see. 
which is the format for all my other workflow scripts. So there is a, uh, a step or an action which is running uh, the scan using CodeGuru. Uh, it's generating a report and outputting it into a specific directory. So all of this looks good to me, so I approve it. And then it goes on to ultimately generating the code. I have, of course, sped up the demo because I have limited time. But if you were to ask me, it's, it took around a couple of minutes. So to be exact, like four minutes to do all of this end to end. Um, so once it's generated the code, again, it creates the pull request for me, links the pull request ticket on the issue itself, assigns the pull request to me as a reviewer. So again, um, I can go on the pull request, look at the changes, a new file called on pull request yaml was created under the workflows directory it has all of this um, sometimes it will not be perfect right it's a code generator uh, but a very good starting point surprisingly in this example it was absolutely perfect so i didn't have to change any kind of format syntax anything in the script and it was able to correctly generate it and i will approve it merge it now it's in the main branch you can see there is an action called scan with code guru security it's running the scan for me and generating the report in a particular format and so on if i go on the reports in code catalyst it will also uh, create the report uh, under that. So, so it's all uh, packaged for you here. So, and it's not just about DevOps, right? So I could be an expert with backend development. But the changes I make or someone else made to the code might make or break maybe something in, uh, in the front end modules. Now, that kind of blocks me. So you can use these scenarios for Q to really understand what the error is all about and propose a fix. Especially if it's a very small bug or a small change, you can really move forward and not wait for another meeting with your front-end developer. So um, this is basically uh, what I had to show you today. But there's lots more. And there are some more exciting features. And um, before I move on to the more exciting features, I thought it would really make sense to share some tips, because this can be a bit overwhelming, right? A lot happened in there, in that demo. There was also a technical glitch, so sorry for that. But uh, I really wanted to share some tips before we move on to the next demo and the next set of features. So how do you get started? I think one of the most important tip to get started would be be very, very detailed. So the main um, you know, uh, advantage here is when you write the description of your issue, be very detailed. So, you know, you tell it which directory you want your script to be created in, what's the name of your script, what are the different steps. So, you know, if you want to like add a testing step in your workflow, you need to mention things like, okay, make sure you uh, install all the requirements before you add the step and things of that sort. So be very detailed. It's like prompt engineering, right? So consider the details you put in your issue description as the prompts that you're giving your model. Uh, so basically, be very detailed there. Second is iterate, right? So you might not get the best answer in the first go, which is why it's asking you. Should I proceed? Should I not proceed? So it's an interactive mode. And I would say leverage this. So when it's giving you an approach, tell it or nudge it into a direction if it's not going in the direction you want it to go. So make it very iterative. And you can do that during your pull request phase as well. So when there is a pull request created, it also asks you, you know, is this fine? And you can add comments and ask it to, OK, Please don't do it this way. Try another approach, or, or, or don't change this API function. Change something else. So be very interactive with it and iterate over to get your desired outcomes. Third is, of course, it's not perfect, right? So it works with popular languages. But if you have a very, very custom or obscure framework or language, it might not be the best. So leverage it for languages and projects that are, you know, more common and more popular. Also, this feature is not in 
connection with the internet in real time. So there are new APIs, new frameworks, new versions that are being released as we speak. So do not really expect it to be aware of all that in real time. Of course, these are based on large language models. They are looking at a lot of data, but it takes time, right? So don't expect it to know every change uh, when it comes to your frameworks and software. So that's also very important. And the last one, and it's very important here is, the planning phase, or the phase where it suggests the approach, is very, very good, is what we have seen while working with it. So where it generates the approach, it does it quite accurately. So it might not generate the perfect code for you, but I really feel like for a software developer or someone new on a project or someone taking up a feature where they are not very familiar with it, it really helps you create that mental model as a developer. So uh, leverage that feature. Of course, uh, you know, feature like code generation will improve over time, but that's not it. You know? So it will maybe generate 80% accurate code for you. Uh, but definitely a very, very good starting point to accelerate development in technologies that are very new, for example, generative AI. So with that, I will hand it over to Daniela to share some more exciting features about this service. Thank you very much, Amna, for the very insightful demo. So we'll have another demo today. I'd like to just take a moment to recap also with the uh, another perspective, the demo that we just had. So in about 10 minutes, we have just deployed a new application based on a blueprint that is re uh, releasing a chatbot for you based on the best practices that are already documented on this blueprint that is available by default in Amazon Code Catalyst. We have created a readme in a completely different language leveraging resources that were available in the project together with Amazon Q as an assistant. And we have also automated a DevOps task by creating an on-pull request to check our pull requests when we create them and check for possible security vulnerabilities. So it's an automated task that happens every single time that you're creating a pull request. So we have uh, ran over very different hats from perspective of documenting the project, adding more DevOps automation, and uh, hopefully improving the security as the product is evolving. Now I would like to go through a few more real life scenarios that we happen to have weekly basis, daily basis, for each person, for each developer will be slightly different. So the scenario I have in mind right now, how often you happen to you know, like invest a few hours into coding a pull request, and then maybe it's at the end of the day you need to write the description of that pull request. How many of you have this happen on a weekly basis? Thank you. It's not, uh, it's not just us. So considering this, you know, you could uh, save another 10, 20 minutes of your day before, like as you before snoozing off on that day, documenting and thinking of the future you, you know, how are you going to understand what you developed on that day by being friendly to you and writing the documentation for that pull request, and of course also for the other members of the team. Uh, or you can postpone it for the next day and then maybe even takes you another hour because you don't have the full context on that day. Well, with Amazon Q, we want to support you as an assistant and it generates for you a description of your pull request by understanding the changes that you have tried to do and it already proposes you a possible description. And I'll show you in a minute how can that look. Another scenario I'd like to bring to you is you have submitted uh, for review your pull request. The team is excited about it, you know, you're improving a new part of your project, and they start to write comments, suggest improvements, and you know, maybe five other developers are pitching in with some reviews. There might be even the same suggestions, but in different parts of the code, and then you have to spend quite some time to read all the suggestions before you make a plan for how you're going to be implementing the next iteration of this feature. 
So what Amazon Q does for you as well is it's able to summarize all these comments and helps you to create the approach much easier. So you, instead of spending maybe half an hour going through all the comments, you might spend hopefully less time uh, to do this with the summary. So let's see these features in action. What we're doing in this particular demo is we are going into creating a new issue, as we did also in the other demos. We put a description. We did take the tips that Amna just gave to us, and we put quite a detailed description. And we are, of course, giving it a title to create a new step in the on pull request. And like we, what we want to achieve with this issue is that we actually test um, and evaluate the test coverage of the uh, coverage of the backend part of the application. So it's going to generate a report that is going to tell you, you know, 30% of your backend application is has test coverage or 60 depends on this. And this can give very valuable information uh, to different people in the team, like maybe the project manager or the product manager to take some risk assessment tools. And as new features continue, of course, the content of this report can be updated. So the feature goes through a series of actions like evaluating the prerequisites, and it's generating a background. And this background is actually very tailored to the request that you're giving to Amazon Q. So it's um, also, as previously suggesting an approach and showing you snippets of the code that will be uh, involved into uh, generating this coverage test as well as the libraries that are being used. So by looking at that, you can get a very good idea of what's going to be the suggestion for the implementation from Amazon Q. And of course, as always, you need to uh, approve it and make it proceed by uh, give it, giving it the instruction to do so. And then only after the uh, generation of the code will start and a new pull request is created. So afterwards, we can already um, go from the issue into the pull request, and we can uh, evaluate even more the changes and look at the possible reports. But the part that I want to highlight in this particular one, in this particular demo, is the description that it generated. We started this demo from the premise that we want automatic descriptions to our pull request, and here it is. We have the title, create a new step in the pull request workflow to add unit tests in the backend code. And this pull request adds one step to the on pull workflow, on pull request workflow to run unit tests for the backend code. And then it tells you all the different steps that are being taken from the libraries that they are being installed and, you, and used to actually generating a coverage report within um, this pull request. So, Having that done that, we have seen how we can create in an assisted mode a new pull issue, and the uh, Amazon Q is going to generate an approach for us. We can approve it and move forward, and then a pull request with certain changes suggested in the code will be suggested, as well as with a description of the pull request that we have just created through Amazon Q assistance. With this, I would like to highlight a few more um, aspects of Amazon Q integration with Code Catalyst. So we're going to start for the standard tier with um, 15 pull requests per space per month. And for enterprise, it scales to 20. And for the entire space per month, it scales to 300. During the evaluation time of the integration of Amazon Q with Code Catalyst, um, this feature is going to be offered at no extra charge. And as it's going to go into the general availability, it's going to become part of the Amazon Q Builder package. I would like to highlight that even though the Code Catalyst feature is available, uh, service is available today in Oregon, US West 2, you can use the code present in this region to deploy application worldwide in any single region. So uh, I think this is pretty interesting to know about this service. Additionally, uh, we have invested, before its release, a lot of time and 
uh, to plan the approach how we make this integration. And we invested a lot of resources in doing this responsibly. So we wanted to make it very safe for you to be able to use this integration so you have control every single time who has access to use this feature. So you can control, of course, who has access to use Amazon Q within your product and your application. You have visibility at any single time on all the tasks that Q is controlling. You can remove a Q as an owner to an issue. So all these are part, of course, of the controllability that we are very interested for you to continue to have. And of course, we wanted to show explainability. So when you look at all the different pull request, you will see the history and in the ownership of who did what in every single issue and pull request. Next, I would like to highlight how our customers are leveraging Amazon Q today. So we have here two different customers from two different industries. And the first one, the Leon Grosse, so they are using Amazon Q as a productivity tool for the software development. One of the issues that maybe you are also exper experiencing as a builder is that whenever you need to uh, work on a new task that has technology you're not very familiar with, you may need to jump out of your focus context, do some research, and then come back to the developer task. It's noticed that this actually uh, makes you lose a bit the focus. And of course, you go and read something new. But uh, we wanted to bring this support to you. And this is also what um, the Leon Gross team experienced while using Amazon Q, that they can stay focused in one seamless experience to get the research done within the same development application about the new technology and the new feature they want to develop. A second reference we have here is from Gilad, uh, and they are from the industry of biopharmaceutical. And what they are using Amazon Q for is for going through all their different data sourcing, indexing that, and give very governed so access to their uh, science um, employees to be able to leverage these data sources when they make research decisions. So instead of reading thousands of uh, pages of documentation, they can leverage Amazon Q to assist them on this research through the indexing they have done on their documentation. So getting back now to our uh, talk, we want to send a few messages before the close-up. So I'll pass it back to Amna, and then we're going to close. Thank you, Daniela. So um, now the call to action is for you to try it yourself. So you know, go to Amazon Code Cal Catalyst, create your account, create a space in the Oregon region, start a new uh, project. If you don't have one on your own, leverage a blueprint that's available that really interests your use case and the needs of your organization and really create issues and leverage Amazon Q as an assistant to help you with your day-to-day -day software development journey, especially in areas where you don't have a lot of time to deal with, right? Because you are busy writing your code, developing new features, um, and accelerate the develop, uh, delivery of uh, all the features and all the values that you, your solution is bringing into your customers or your organization internally. Uh, before I close, just wearing the hat of a software developer, I'm a data scientist. Uh, there's just not data science that I do on a daily basis, right? In order to make sure my AI applications see the face of production, I have to wear various hats, the hat of a software developer, the hat of a tester, the hat of a DevOps engineer, ML engineer, and so on and so forth. And of course, I cannot be perfect in all of those roles. And that's, this is where you know, I leverage features of Amazon Code Catalyst, where you know, I need to create a new workflow, or I need to fix a pipeline that broke that really is blocking uh, my feature to see the face of uh, you know, uh, QA or production and so on. So really, really helps me in those uh, uh, aspects and in those situations. This is in no way saying that, you know, OK, then you will just need a smaller team 
to do the task. What it really is saying is it's going to assist and improve the software development journey of your developers in your team, uh, especially not just, you know, there are a lot of solutions there uh, out there today that really help in your uh, code development journey, right? So you have uh, an assistant that you can install in your IDE that helps you write code. It helps you finish your code or make some suggestions of the variables you can use or you've already, you know, initially in your code. But what it is doing additionally here is, while you can leverage those services and those products, you're also making sure that these things really work end to end. So, you know, it's automated, the workflows are in place, CI CD is in place, and that's how you can show the value your product is really bringing to your organization and your customers. So with that, I will hand it over to Daniela to share her point of view uh, from her perspective. Yeah, so as a, as a manager, the way I see this service is it's helping my team to, at the end of the day, be able to have much more certainty that they have leveraged best practices based on what the tech community has been able to produce and make open source. So leveraging all these blueprints while uh, creating a new chatbot, I think it's very instrumental. Go and experiment yourself with Code Catalyst. We really love this service after trying it for a few months now. So we really believe that your creativity can be uh, the limit here when what you achieve with it. And we also noticed that the customers that did give it a try, they really loved it. And we want you to be able to experiment it from different roles to evaluate yourself if it does give you this seamless experience to develop new software and reimagine the DevOps behind it. And we're very excited to stay back if you have any questions. Thank you very much.